and they put a deal where there's a privately owned kitchen in Gwinnett that anybody who wants to do food processing can go into. They can be a member of it. And this is a sustainable opportunity. And this is something that we need to look at within our community. It's going to create jobs. It's going to create opportunities for a secondary and a tertiary market for our farmers. Look, part-time, any full-time farmers in here? <clears throat> That's what I thought. You cannot be a full-time farmer by selling me a basket of tomatoes once a week. Okay? You've got to get away to create value-added opportunities to these farmers, and the food kitchen is one of them. That was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, would, I would, for the most part, encourage that we do that as well. Um, I know Commissioner Lowry has been working uh, hard on developing some type of a, a food kitchen to um, encourage locally grown uh, farmers to come so that they can actually sell their products uh, outside of just directly to us. They can sell them to stores as well. Um, I would encourage that as well. Okay, I'm going to go into a little bit different direction, uh, although Spencer took a little of my sting out of this. Uh, this. This is a private sector issue. And I can tell you if it's economically feasible, there are smart young entrepreneurs out there that will jump on it. And uh, in fact, uh, Buffalo's uh, restaurant over in Hitchwood is looking at the possibility of a community kitchen now. Uh, Sharon is taking me back in and showing the credit of excess space, and they can do it out of what the status is now. I have a son-in-law in Atlanta that has opened uh, two small family restaurants where he went into economically depressed, actually dangerous, drug-infested areas where nobody else was willing to make a financial investment and started restaurants. Both of those little restaurants, one of them is about 16 years old now, are, are doing well. They, they are the anchors for a, a thriving uh, commercial strip around the spine company. Somebody else is willing to take a chance. And so, so as I said, you know, the private sector will do lots of things if, if they, if they just, if we just get out of the way and let them do it. But those, those restaurants are now providing income for his family. They're, they've stabilized those communities, and they, and they are actually lifting those communities up. And I think it's going to happen here through the private sector. Well, I'm going to take a little bit different tack too, because I think shared kitchens is a great idea, but it only allows food processing. We have some great examples of that in Athens. Um, uh, the other part of the economic stimulus program that I've been working on was for small businesses and to help start small businesses. And you won't believe how many of those were food. Everything from uh, African um, pickles and to um, salsas to, uh, I don't know if you've heard of pickles, but it sold and had a booth at AthFest, and they are doing wonderful. They're really getting great distribution. We have, um, but none of those kitchens that we're talking about could do food, um, food production, which is essentially means you're cooking. And so that has to, you can't, and you can only have one user in a kitchen like that. And so our real secret in this community is to enlist the University of Georgia because you can do it as an educational source. You can have shared users. So I think, I, and I think that's a major area that you know, we saw when we met, when I met with the people related to the community kitchen. Um, but I want to talk about a, a way I think Athens can promote local, um, local food industries that we're not doing now. If you go on any of the websites that talk about Athens, you will not find mention of the food industry that we have, the franchises that have started here, from everything from, um, everybody knows about um, Locos and um, those kinds of things, but I'm talking about Terrapin beer and some of the big things that we have. I think Athens can become a made and known for made in Athens, belong and way beyond um, just the small kinds of businesses that will be naturally fed by the interest in Athens and the recognition of us as a food place. When we look at uh, the community kitchens idea, we, we do have to understand that there are pros and cons and liabilities there that oftentimes individuals are not willing to share. 
So we have to look at that as maybe a cooperative coming together from private businesses. And that it's got to be viable to them and that it's got to be profitable for them to continue that. Uh, when we talk about process, when I've talked with uh, the Department of Agriculture, they actually uh, have written about the process and pro process and why we don't have many in Georgia. Because the FDA put so many burdens and so many regulations on that that it is often cheaper and even better to inspect the product and then bring in the right product. So we need to look at that. But as far as the community kitchen where we can do that, we need to have that and we have an outlet for it. Right now, we collect food from uh, almost all of the restaurants in town and you would be surprised how much they dispose of because they don't want the liability of it being handled by somebody else and coming back to them. So those are some of the things that we have to take into consideration when we're thinking about that. But as mayor and as the committee, we need to remove some of the regulations that may inhibit that that we have control over. But then we still need to be sure that we look at what's out there and what can be done, what can't be done, and make the best of what we already have. So we have two questions left, but now would be a really great time for you to jot down your question because after this session, audience questions. So Joe has cards if you all have any, please just put your hands up. Get creative. All right. A community kitchen is also a vital component to supporting a food truck culture. As an example of a small-scale food business, what do you think the pros and cons are to food carts from both the governmental and the community perspective? Once in office, what would you do to aid them? And uh, I would say the pros uh, uh, sorry, the part, sorry, giving businesses uh, and local people, entrepreneurs, who don't actually have enough money to start up an actual restaurant or uh, go out there and get a you know, $200,000 loan to buy the store. <laughs> and instead, they can get a, a growth fund loan for you know, maybe $10,000 and start their own business, which uh, encourages entrepreneurship, brings tax dollars back into our community. And you know, it adds this sense of a culture to our uh, community in Portland. Uh, Oregon is actually known for their food carts. They have them, you know, up and down their parts, and um, and it's it's kind of a big thing. You go to Portland, you want to uh, figure out which food cart you want to eat at instead of actually which restaurant you want to eat at. Um, I believe we have that type of enthusiasm here um, for food carts, and also we can tie that into tourism, which brings in even more money. Um, tourists often look for those things uh, that will give them. You know, it's something local as opposed to uh, this this chain restaurant, or even you know a restaurant where you have to go to the city and you're exploring the city. You're going to the University of Georgia. Um, I've often stopped and you know got a two dollar hot dog. There's nothing better than that. So uh, food carts are very very important. The only con that I would see is to make sure that we implement enough uh, oversight and regulation on that to make sure that those people who own food carts are preparing their food correctly so that we don't. Uh, make people sick. Um, that, that doesn't help anybody. So, that's it. Okay, I'm not going to take two minutes. Y'all probably be glad to hear that. Um, I love food carts. I think they add excitement. I think they add atmosphere. I think they add fun to the city. Uh, I would like to see more of them. But the, the regulations we need to do is we need to make sure that they don't impede traffic, that they don't don't impede the sidewalks that people need to use. Uh, and, and, of course, the health department would be responsible for inspecting them to make sure that our health is protected. But I, I would like to see more of them. We also, the only regulation I would like to see us as government do is to be sure we don't allow them in places where people have invested in bricks and mortar and, and, and big equipment so that they're not taking business away from a, uh, from a restaurant that they park in front of or something so, so that we don't give unfair competition. But I think they're wonderful. But Glenn, it doesn't take hundreds of thousands of dollars to start a restaurant. My kids started with ten thousand dollars. My daddy was in the restaurant business, and it's hard. I can tell you that the food industry is hard. Um, if you have time, you might go on the local farm tours because it's a good way of helping them and learning what these people um, have to do to produce the kind of things we enjoy. I, I agree with um, on most of what Nancy said about food carts. Uh, I think that I was in Charleston recently and it made me bemoan the fact that we have deadened our streets. 
Uh, we, don't, we can't have an art walk on first Fridays because we can't carry a, an open container around, for instance, just because there are people that abuse that seven times a year, when 365 days a year, we live with it 